With Monster Hunter World Iceborne comes Master Rank, a challenge that will test every hunter, but with the right gear and builds, hunters can overcome anything. I'm Darkblade, and we're back with even more amazing builds from Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at four set beginner builds for the Longsword. The Longsword in Monster Hunter World Iceborne has had some dramatic changes. EI Slash and EI Spirit Slash fundamentally changes how the Longsword works and the rotations hunters can pull off with it. As such, when used correctly, hunts against monsters can feel more like a dance when using this elegant weapon. The builds I use tend to balance all aspects of the Longsword, allowing for damage, survivability and more. Now a disclaimer for this series though, as Iceborne is still young, most hunters may not have been able to farm everything they need for the most high-end game builds. So this series will instead focus on 4 set beginner builds, highlighting some of the amazing armour designs, while at the same time helping new Iceborne players get through to the end of the main story. As a result, these builds will not feature Elder Dragon loot or augmentations. The customization will come in the form of different jewels, charms and weaponry. So the first build I use is the Vespoid Paralysis build. This build makes use of the Paralysis element, allowing a hunter to crowd control a monster while at the same time dishing out a decent amount of damage. It is also crafted from one of the easiest sets to get, the Vespoid armor. So for this you'll need the entire Vespoid set which includes the Vespoid Helm Beta, Mel Beta, Van Braces Beta, Coil Beta and Greaves Beta. I'm also using the Handicraft Charm 3 and for my weapon I'm using the Crimson Viper Fang 2. This is found in the Viper Toby Kodachi tree. As for your jewels, now there are a mixed bag here, we have a lot to play with and depending on your jewel collection you may have different jewels to play around with. Now firstly I've gone for Sheath Jewels to max out the Quick Sheath skill. These jewels also came with byproducts in the form of expert jewels which I've added a few more to give us some critical eye. I've then gone for paralyzer jewels to max out the paralysis rating of this build, a handicraft jewel which also came with a byproduct of a protection jewel to add some extra sharpness to this build. This also gives us a point in divine blessing. Afterwards I've gone for vitality jewels to give us maxed out health boost and a sharp jewel to provide us with that protective polish. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 875 with purple sharpness. You have 40% affinity with a paralysis rating of 320. As for your defense, you're very strong against every single element, especially dragon. The only one you're weak to is fire. As for the skills, you'll have critical eye level five. This increases our affinity by a set percentage. Your paralysis attack level 4, this increases the paralysis damage of a build as well as the paralysis build up. You have handicraft level 4, handicraft increases the sharpness of a build and increasing our handicraft on this build allows us to get to that purple sharpness, allowing our weapon to deal more damage. You have health boost level 3, increasing our health to that potential maximum of 200. You have quick sheave level 3, this is one of the more essential skills on the longsword, at least I feel it is. With the introduction of the special sheave or EI sheave, when a hunter sheaves the sword in that special stance, quick sheave can actually increase how quickly a hunter does this, so it adds to a build's quality of life. You also have paralysis resistance level 1, a byproduct of the gear but comes in handy for resisting paralysis attacks. You have windproof level 1, again a byproduct of the gear but helps resist wind attacks. You have critical draw level 1, this is a byproduct of the gear but increases our affinity by a set amount when we perform draw attacks and the longsword does benefit from this more than other weapons because when you perform the EI slash or EI spirit slash they're actually counted as draw attacks so they gain that bonus affinity that critical draw provides us. You have divine blessing level 1 giving us a chance of taking reduced damage and you have protective polish level 1, allowing us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. So as you can see this first build is a little bit of a all rounder build, it has crowd control elements, a little bit of DPS and a little bit of survival. It also comes with a few quality of life skills thanks to having quick sheath. Now yes its DPS may be a little bit lower than some of the other builds featured in this video but the fact that you can potentially paralyze a monster means that they'll be open to your attacks and harder hitting moves. Just remember to take into account a monster's ailment weaknesses before using this build. Anyway let's move on to the next build which again is a little bit of a quirky build but is quite potent which is the Baryoth Punishing Draw build. This build utilizes a unique set bonus found on the Baryoth armor set. The Punishing Draw set bonus 
adds a stun effect to your draw attacks, as well as increasing your attack power. So as the EI Slash and EI Spirit Slash counters draw attacks, the Longsword can really make use of this set bonus. So for this build you'll need the entire Barioff set, so that's the Barioff Helm Beta, Mel Beta, Van Brace's Beta, Fouled's Beta and Greaves Beta. I'm also using a KO Charm 3, and for my weapon I'm using the Tigreen Need. This is the weapon found in the Tigrex tree. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. First of all, I've gone for a Sheave Jewel to max out the Quick Sheave skill. I've then gone for Expert Jewels to give us some Critical Eye. I've then gone for Draw Jewels to max out the Crit Draw skill. Two of these had Vitality Jewels as their byproduct, to which I've added another one to max out the Health Boost skill. And one of them also had a byproduct of a Medicine Jewel to provide us with the Recovery Up skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 974 with white sharpness. You have 5% affinity with no element. And as for your defense, you're strong against ice and water, neutral against dragon, but fairly weak to fire and thunder. As for the skills, you're a critical eye level 5, health boost level 3, recovery up level 3. Recovery up increases the effectiveness of healing techniques and methods such as taking potions and that. You have critical draw level 3, increasing our draw attacks affinity by 100%. So this combined with the critical eye completely counters the negative affinity of the Tigrex longsword. You have Slugger level 3, Slugger increases the knockout potential of this build and it also stacks with the set bonus which we'll talk about in a minute. You have Quick Sheath level 3, Power Prolonger level 2, this is a byproduct of the gear but helps the longsword stay charged up for longer periods. You have Constitution level 3, again a byproduct, basically it reduces the stamina cost of moves that cost a set amount of stamina like dodging. You have Veil Extender level 1, again a byproduct but increases the distance at which we can dodge. And finally, you'll have the set bonus, Barioff's Hidden Art, Punishing Draw. This adds a stun effect to your draw attacks as well as increases your attack power slightly. So this will not only affect your normal draw attacks, but like I said, it also benefits the EI Slash and EI Spirit Slash. And this combined with a maxed out slugger means that if you're aiming for a monster's head, you should be able to knock them out quite efficiently with this build but it is relying on you getting used to the new moves that the Longsword has in its arsenal. But should you master the EI Slash and the EI Spirit Slash, then this build works wonders. Of course there is room for changes, for example you may not have all the jewels available like I do here, or you may wish to switch some of them around, for example you could drop a jewel for an elementalist jewel if you want to increase the raw damage of this build, but then you'll have to play around with negative affinity, the choice is up to you. But anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is a little bit more of a simpler build, which is the Raphalos Fire build. This build utilizes the Raphalos set that benefits weapons that have high raw attack as well as using the fire element. So for this build, I've used the entire Raphalos set, which includes the Raphalos Helm Alpha, Mel Beta, Van Brace's Alpha, Coil Beta, and Greaves Alpha. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 3, and for my weapon, I'm using Glavinus Spada 2, which is found in the Glavinus tree. As for your jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with here. Again, I've gone for sheave jewels to give us that quick sheave skill. These also come with some byproducts in the form of expert jewels to give us some critical eye. I've then gone for a handicraft jewel to get our sharpness to at least purple sharpness. I've then gone for some vitality jewels. And finally, I've gone for a sharp jewel to provide us that protective polish. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all the relevant consumables. You have an attack of 914 with purple sharpness. You have an affinity rating of 15, which will actually be 65 when you're on hunt and you're attacking monster weak points and those weak points have been tenderized first with a fire rating of 380. And as for your defense, you're incredibly strong against fire, water and ice, but fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for the skills, you have attack boost level 4. Attack boost increases the raw damage of the build and also at level 4 it provides you an extra bonus 5% affinity. You have fire attack level 4, increasing the fire rating and damage of this build. You have handicraft level 4. You have health boost level 3. Weakness exploit level 3. Weakness exploit increases your affinity by a set percentage when you're attacking monster weak points. And if you tenderize that monster weak point first, then this is increased even further. Although tenderizing a monster's weak point with the lighter weapons requires multiple clutch claw attacks. You have quick sheave level 3, critical eye level 2, slinger capacity level 2, a byproduct of the gear but increases how much slinger ammunition we can have. You have jump master level 1, again a byproduct of our gear but prevents knockback when we perform jumping attacks. 
and you'll have protective polish level one you'll also have the set bonus rapalos's essence mind's eye preventing your attacks from bouncing off a monster's hide although this set bonus isn't the most useful on the long sword as the spirit slashes naturally have the mind's eye built into it anyway so there you have it as you can see it is a pretty straightforward build utilizing weapons with high attack and the fire element of course when using this build you need to take into account a monster's weakness as if they're at all resistant to fire this build isn't going to work whatsoever nonetheless this one is easy to craft is functional and can be taken into a lot of hunts but anyway let's move on to the fourth and final build which is the acidic glavinous elementalist build this is a build all about having high raw damage utilizing the acidic glavinous set this also means it benefits from the maximum might secret allowing this set to use the most potent form of the maximum might skill so for this build you need the entire acidic glavina set which includes the helm beta mel beta braces beta coil beta and greaves beta i'm also using an attack charm 4 which will be only level 3 if you're going through monster hunter world iceborne story for the first time and for my weapon i'm using the acid scimitar 2 which is found in the acidic glavinous tree as for your jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with here. First of all, I've gone for an Elementalist jewel to provide us with that non-elemental skill. I've then gone for Sheave jewels to max out the Quick Sheave skill. And as usual, two of these came with the byproduct of having Expert jewels attached to them. I've then gone for a Handicraft jewel, which also had a byproduct of a Protection jewel attached to it. Vitality jewels, as well as Mighty jewels to max out the Maximum Might skill. And then finally, I've gone for a Sharp jewel to provide us with that Protected Polish. But anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have to build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all the relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1,112 with purple sharpness with 15% affinity. I know it says 25 in this video, but the acid scimitar I was using also had a affinity increase augmentation attached to it, adding an extra 10%. But when you're on a hunt and have maximum stamina, this affinity rating will be 40% higher. So without the augmentation, it will be 55% affinity. You have no element. And as for your defense, you're fairly strong against water and ice, but weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have maximum might level five. Maximum might increases our affinity by a set percentage when our stamina is full. Now maximum might went through a few changes for Iceborne which means normally your stamina has to be at max for five full seconds before the skill activates. And after using stamina, the effect only lasts for a few extra seconds. However, at level five, it functions pretty much as it did in Monster Hunter World. So as soon as your stamina gauge is full, maximum might instantly reactivates. Anyway, you have attack boost level four, handicraft level four, health boost level three, quick sheave level three, stun resistance level two, a byproduct of the gear but helps resist stun effects, you have Critical Eye level 2, Divine Blessing level 2, Effluvial Resistance level 2. This is a byproduct of the gear, but helps resist the effluvial effect down in the Rotten Vale areas. You have Stamina Surge level 1, again a byproduct, but increases how quickly our stamina regenerates. You have Protective Polish level 1, Non Elemental Boost level 1, which increases the raw damage of our build so long as the element or ailment is hidden, as is the case with the Acid Scimitar 2. And finally, you'll have the set bonus Glavinous Essence Maximum Might Secret, allowing us to get maximum might to that potential level 5. Normally, it will only go to level 3, in which case you won't get the bonus of having maximum might activate as soon as your stamina gauge is full. So there you have it. As you can see, it is quite a strong build, focusing on raw attack over anything else. It was a shame we couldn't get a few skills included in this build. Like for example, it would have been nice to get maxed out weakness exploit to go alongside maximum might, but unfortunately, we only had limited slots to play with. Now, a few reminders about this build. Remember that if you're going through Iceborne's story for the first time, you may not have attack boost at level four. It may be only level three, in which case you could replace one of the jewels with an attack jewel. Also, when it comes to health boost and maximum might being maxed out, you may have to choose between these two skills depending on your jewel collection. This build should work fine without maximum health as the defense rating on the set is quite high, but as always, this just goes to show the sheer variety that we can have in our builds in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. But nonetheless, the build here as it is, is very strong against any monster, regardless of the monster's elemental or ailment weaknesses. So there we have it, those are the beginner full set builds that I used for the longsword in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are a lot more end game mix sets to come, and as I always say you don't have to use what is shown in these videos. Use what you want to use, as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any weapon or gear set. 
Also builds taken from previous seasons can still work in Iceborne, at least for early game. They'll have the DPS but may lack the survivability. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you beginner Iceborne builds for the longsword in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.